We've had lots of requests for a video on three-phase voltage drop in electrical installations. Lots of factors can affect this. The position in relation to the origin, cable sizes, types of cables and the loads being serviced, just to name a few. In this video, we will give a basic introduction to the subject, keeping it simple so that everybody can learn. To begin, let's remind ourselves about three-phase supplies. The secondary side of the supply transformer, the supply side to us, is in what we call a star configuration. It looks like a star, with three phase conductors coming off the windings and the opposite ends of each winding being joined together at a central point called the star point. The star point is also where we find the neutral and the earth connections. For three phase supplies, between any two phases, we will measure 400 volts as shown in the green table. We can also derive a single phase supply by using any phase plus the neutral conductor and this will give us 230 volts as in the yellow box. We won't always use the neutral in a three phase circuit but in both three phase and single phase circuits we will supply and use the earth as our fault path. The point at which the supply enters the building, usually where the metering equipment is located, is known as the intake position. This is the origin of the supply for this installation, the point after which the cables become ours. We can add a distribution board at the origin of the installation. A distribution board or consumer unit installed close to the origin, as shown here, will not have any measurable voltage drop between the intake position and the distribution board. In commercial and industrial premises, we may find that one or more distribution boards have been positioned some distance away from the intake, the origin. Now, there will be a measurable voltage drop at the distribution board. If we add a load to the distribution board, in this case a single phase load, it too will have a voltage drop between the distribution board and the load itself. And we want to know, we want to calculate what this total voltage drop will be. There is a voltage drop on the three phase side and a voltage drop on the single phase side. To help me keep track of which voltage drop I am calculating, I call the three phase voltage drop VD3, the voltage drop in the three phase cables, and VD1 for the voltage drop in the single phase cables, just one phase. This is the system that I work to in this video. If you have another method that works for you, then great. What do the wiring regulations say about voltage drop? If we look at section 525 on page 148 of the Amendment 2 Regulations book, we will find this short section. Amongst other things, it tells us that the actual voltage at the equipment should be above a certain lower limit, as we shall see. It reminds us that any voltage drop should not be so significant that it will affect the safe functioning of accessories and equipment. And it informs us of where to find the stated limits to voltage drop. If we go now to page 430 in the Wiring Regulations book, we will find Table 4AB. We're interested in the top row, a public supply, in other words, the national grid. There are two limits to take into consideration. If the load is a lighting circuit and nothing else, then we have a permitted maximum voltage drop of 3% of what the supply voltage is at the origin. For all other circuits, it is 5% between the origin and the load. The reason for specifying percentages and not the actual voltages will become clear very soon. There are two basic formulas almost identical and very easy to use and we will be using both formulas. This is the standard formula that you will come across in many books, the on-site guide and so on. Inductance can be ignored for AC conductors up to and including 16 square millimeters and for all sizes of DC conductor and the formula here is adequate. What the symbols mean is shown in the blue box on this slide. 
For conductors above 16 square millimetres, which effectively means 25 square millimetres and above if using standard sizes of cables, we use this factor with a little z. This is found in the tables for voltage drop. There is a z value for single phase circuits and a different z value for three phase circuits. Before we begin, let's look at some assumptions that we've made. For these basic calculations, we will assume that the cables are at their maximum permitted operating temperature, either 70 degrees centigrade or 90 degrees centigrade, as described in the examples shown later. And the load factor is at the worst possible value for the cables, and the power factor is not taken into account. This will give us a belt and braces size of cable, and sometimes the basic calculation may give a larger than needed cable CSA, but it will never recommend a cable size that is too small. First of all, we will need to find the correct cable tables. This is to ensure that we have the correct millivolt drop data for the calculations. Page 420 of the regulations book shows all the cable types mentioned in the book. Shown here, we've highlighted multi-core armoured cable with 90 degrees centigrade thermosetting insulation and copper conductors. The table tells us to go to table 4E4 for the data, and table 4E4 begins on page 464. The information that we need is in table 4E4B and found on page 465. We are looking for Z. As you can see, the Z values only begin at 25 mm conductor sizes and we will use these tables in the examples that follow. Be sure to use the correct columns for single phase and three phase cables. The values are different and they will make a difference to your choice of cable sizes. So let's do an example. Please feel free to pause the video as we go along and do attempt the calculations yourself. Interaction is the best way to learn and understand what is really a very easy topic. This is the scenario. A 400 volt three phase distribution board is installed 25 meters from the origin using four core multi core armored cable with 90 degrees centigrade thermosetting insulation and copper conductors. The conductor CSA is 25 square millimeters and IB, the design current, is 80 amps. The 230 volt 40 amp single phase non lighting load is wired in 70 degrees centigrade 10 square millimeter flat profile twin and earth cable with a length of 25 meters. Calculate the total voltage drop for the load. We are looking at two separate calculations here. There are two parts to the installation, the three phase part and the single phase part. In the blue box is listed all the things that we've taken from the actual question about the three phase part. The only thing that we don't know is the value of MVAMZ and we find this in the cable tables. The brown box shows the single phase data and this time we need to know MVAM without a Z. If we go to page 465 and look at table 4E4B we will see 25mm CSA in the left column and tracking along to the far right is the corresponding three phase value for Z or MVAMZ as we will use it. The Z figure is 1.65. We can now enter this 1.65 into the blue information box. Now it's just a case of using the formula for the three phase part. Entering the data that we know, we have 1.65 multiplied by 80 amps multiplied by 25 meters and all divided by 1000. The answer is 3.3 volts. But we need a percentage. So multiply 3.3 by 100 and divide by 400 volts, the three phase voltage. And we have a voltage drop percentage of 0.83%. And that's the first half of the question done. Now we find the single phase answers. We will use this formula without the Z attached. The box shows that we still need to find MVAM, the millivolts per amp per meter that are lost in the cable. 
we need to go to another cable table. This time we want table 4D5 on page 456. Find 10mm CSA on the left, move across to the far right and we have a millivolt per amp per meter loss of 4.4. Our information gathering is now complete. Put the data into the equation and out pops 3.52 volts. Convert this to a percentage and we have an answer of 1.53% for the single phase part. The last step is to add the two percentages together. 0 0.83 plus 1.53 is a total of 2.36%. The maximum permitted voltage drop percentage for a non-lighting circuit is 5%. And at 2.36% this voltage drop is within acceptable limits. Now we can add the voltage drops together. But we cannot just add the three phase volts drop to the single phase volts drop. One is at 400 volts and the other at 230 volts. It just won't work. What we do is to add the two percentages together as we've already done and then find the percentage in relation to the 230 volt load. So 2.36% multiplied by 230 volts and divided by 100 gives us an actual total voltage drop of 5.43 volts. At 230 volts, a 5% maximum permitted voltage drop is 11.5 volts. The actual voltage drop is 5.43 volts, so this non-lighting load is an acceptable situation. Now we can do another example calculation. Again, follow along, pause the video where needed, and try the calculations yourself. Here is the question. A 400 volt three phase distribution board is installed 90 meters from the origin using four core multi core armored cable with 70 degree centigrade thermoplastic insulation and copper conductors. The conductor CSA is 25 square millimeters and IB, the design current, is 80 amps. The 230 volt 20 amp single phase non lighting load is wired in 70 degrees centigrade 4 square millimeter flat profile thermoplastic twin and earth cable with a length of 30 meters. Calculate the total voltage drop for the load. Again, start by collecting together all the data that you already know and find what you need to know. We need to find a cable table for MVAMZ and page 420 tells us that we need table 4D4. Here is table 4D4B on page 455 of the regs book. 25mm 4 core cable on this table has a Z value of 1.50. We can now put 1.50 into the data box for MVAMZ and make the calculation. Making the calculation 1.50 multiplied by 80 amps multiplied by 90 meters and divided by 1000 is 10.8 volts. Now convert that to a percentage of the 400 volt supply. 10.8 multiplied by 100 and divided by 400 is 2.7%. Now we must find VD1 percentage, the single phase part. The formula without the Z this time. We have all the information we need except MVAM for 4 square millimeter twin and earth cable and we find this by consulting the appropriate cable table. We need table 4D5 on page 456. Find 4 millimeter CSA in the left column, track along to the right and the MVAM number is shown as 11. We now have all the data we need for the single phase part. If we make the calculation, we have an answer of 6.6 .6, and we must convert this to a percentage. The calculation is 6.6 .6 multiplied by 100 and divided by 230 volts. This tells us that the percentage voltage drop for the single phase side is 2.87%. Now we can add the percentages together. As mentioned a few moments ago, we cannot just add the voltage drops together since one is for 400 volts and the other for 230 volts. 
we must add the percentages and then work out the actual voltage drop. Adding the two percentages together, we have a total of 5.57%. But the maximum permitted voltage drop percentage for a non-lighting circuit is 5%. And at 5.57%, the voltage drop is above the permitted maximum. If we convert this to a voltage as shown, we have 12.81 volts. At 230 volts, a 5% maximum permitted voltage drop is 11.5 volts, and the actual voltage drop at the non-lighting load is greater than the maximum permitted, and is therefore not acceptable. So let's have a practice question and see if we can find a solution for this not acceptable result. This time, minimal help from me, work this one out yourself. Make notes and do the calculations yourself, it all helps. The previous question, example 2, returned a voltage drop above the maximum permitted value. If we increased the CSA for the 4-core multi-core cable from 25 square millimetres to 35 square millimetres, calculate what the new voltage drop percentage and the actual voltage drop will be and then decide if this is now acceptable. Here is the question and we will use larger CSA conductors for the three-phase cable. A 400 volt three-phase distribution board is installed 90 metres from the origin using four-core multi-core armoured cable with 70 degrees centigrade thermoplastic insulation and copper conductors. The three-phase conductor CSA is now 35 square millimetres and IB is still 80 amps. The 230 volt 20 amp single phase non-lighting load is wired in 70 degrees centigrade 4 square millimetre flat profile twin and earth cable with a length of 30 metres. Calculate the total voltage drop for the load. We'll even start you off with this question. Here are the information boxes almost completed for you. Start by finding the MVAMZ number from the cable tables as before. Pause the video and attempt to answer the whole question before looking at my answer on the next slide. My answer then, VD3 percentage is 1.98% and VD1 percentage is 2.87%. Added together, we have 4.85%. This is below 5% for a non-lighting circuit and is acceptable. 35mm conductors will do the job. The total voltage drop between the origin and the load is 11.16 volts, which is below the maximum permitted voltage drop of 11.5 volts. And that is a basic introduction to three-phase voltage drop calculations. We hope that you found the video useful and informative. It's a little more knowledge for the mental toolbox. And thank you for watching. It really is appreciated. Please subscribe to our channel to get access to all of our videos and remember to click on notify to be sure of not missing our next video. And you will find even more information, videos and help on our website at learnelectrics.com. And don't forget that you can also type in Learn Electrics, all one word, into the YouTube search bar to go directly to our channel at any time from any computer. We are constantly adding new videos to our channel, so don't miss the next one. And once again, thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again very soon.